Hi everyone, I'm Paul Kozowski and welcome back to The Crawl. This next brew pub that I want to show you is nestled deep in the Appalachian Mountains in Virginia. It's right off the intersection of Route 64 and 81. So whenever I travel from North Carolina up to New Jersey, I, I always try to visit this place because it's only about five minutes out of the way for me. Uh, I've done ep five episodes so far and this is the first time that I'm returning to a state to do a crawl. Uh, when I first plan this or when Joe Joe was first discussing the crawl with me, I thought that I was going to be more like the technical guy. Like I would like describe the brew process, but it turns out I'm more of like this roving reporter, like going from different states and stuff like that and checking out scenes all over the country. Uh, and I kind of like that. I, I hope I get to um, kind of branch out a little bit more and, and show you what's around, especially the Southeast area here. So let's see how long I can keep that up. Devil's Backbone is named for the rich and valley mountain feature that resides in Northern Virginia. It's a cool sounding name that highlights the rural origins of this company, so it works really well. They incorporate this theme in subtle ways. For example, they call their brewery an outpost, and their IPAs are named 8 point and 16 point, which is a reference to buckshot gauges. If you don't live in Virginia and you've heard of this brand, it's probably because you saw this six pack in your local supermarket. Vienna Lager is their most well known beer by a long shot. It's competent, it has something for everybody, and it's a great example of a simple lager with taste. If you see it in stores, do yourself a favor and pick one up. We're now at the entrance of the outpost. It's very unassuming, and it looks more like an old granary than a place to eat. I first visited this place back in 2012, and the front looks exactly the same. There's some tall silos indicating this is where they do all of their commercial brewing. Here's where things get interesting, at least for me. When I first came here in 2012, there was wood paneling behind the bar and there was no back room at all. Also, there were a lot fewer taps available. So it's really nice revisiting a place that I liked and seeing that it's gotten more popular and it grew while I was away. Here's another sign that this place grew up nicely. They have quite a few banners to their name, which is surprising for a relatively small brewery. Of course, they have plenty of space on the wall for a few more. Behind the indoor dining area is some nice outdoor seating. The deck is beautiful, although it would be better if it wasn't overlooking a road. I'm surprised that they did so little renovation in the front of the outpost while pushing the party to the back. Then again, mullets are popular out here, and I guess Devil's Backbone is the mullet of brew pubs. So that's all I have for Devil's Backbone. It, it was kind of a short video, uh, but that's kind of fitting because uh, whenever I drive up there, I'm passing through and I can only have one beer anyway since I'm driving long distance. Uh, one thing that I was surprised to learn, I uh, was doing research and it looks like Devil's Backbone was actually bought by InBev. They're a huge conglomerate. They own Budweiser, they own, they own a lot of things. Um, so unfortunately they can't call themselves craft beer anymore. But you would never know it when you walk into the place and whenever you have a beer at the bar. Um, you know, I still feel like it has that craft brew vibe. Um, so it's still definitely worth checking out. Uh, I don't think that there's anything particularly wrong with a company deciding to get that security, especially since they were a, a little bit out of the way. So um, a lot of their business went into uh, shipping their Vienna Lager. So I, I can see why they would went through InBev, but um, it, it is really nice when, when you can call it craft beer and... Um, you know, uh, I'm still glad that they kept their overall uh, craft beer vibe when, when you were at the store. So um, other than that, it was nice to see Devil's Backbone growing and uh, I hope to see it uh, continue to grow for many more years.